Over the course of five years, Ethiopia, led by Abi Ahmed and the Oromo Prosperity Party, has tragically been ensnared in an unending cycle of turmoil. This relentless stream of conflict, characterized by a heart-wrenching propensity for bloodshed, has left an enduring scar on the nation. The puzzling question at hand is why Ethiopia, under Nobel laureate Abiy Ahmed's leadership, has experienced successive cycles of violence, despite his initial promise of peace. This conundrum necessitates a closer examination of the underlying factors behind this turmoil, particularly Abiy's rapid shift between conflicts and the unprecedented bloodshed during his tenure. Why does Abiy, along with his loyal Oromo political base, seem to constantly shift from one conflict to another, with Eritrea now emerging as the latest focal point of interest? The unsettling prospect of another major war hangs heavily over the region. There's a critical question that needs to be asked. Can Ethiopia endure more bloodshed especially after enduring five years of violence in regions like Amhara, Tigray, and Afar. Can he govern without resorting to bloodshed, states of emergency, or civil war? What drives his inclination to be trigger-happy, to retaliate, to instigate, and fuel hatred, and his insatiable thirst for violence and bloodshed? Abiy's history is marked by a deeply troubling and tragic journey. Joining the Oromo rebel army as a child soldier at the tender age of 14, he was thrust into the horrors of violence and conflict. Child soldiers like Abiy at that time endure a spectrum of psychological hardships, facing the grim reality of participating in or witnessing acts of brutality that lead to desensitization and emotional detachment. The trauma from exposure to death and abuse can result in lasting mental health disorders, including PTSD, anxiety, and depression. Moreover, their involvement in warfare robs them of their childhood and disrupts normal brain development. It's reasonable to consider that Abiy may be suffering from the traumatic experiences of his violent past. His track record as a rebel, foot soldier, chief spy, and later as prime minister has been marred by significant bloodshed and conflict. As a nation, it's important to address the impact of his violent predisposition and untreated psychological trauma. Considering these concerns, it's imperative for him to seek professional help and taking steps to address his past traumas, whether it be through therapy, counseling, or other forms of support, it is crucial for his well-being and for the nation's stability that he receives the necessary care. Over the past three decades, Abiy Ahmed has immersed himself in three major Ethiopian wars, donning different hats in each. His turbulent odyssey kick-started when he was a mere child, thrust into the chaos of a communist regime joining an ethnic Oromo rebel movement at the tender age of 14. He then waded into the harrowing Ethiopia-Eritrea war in 2000 as a foot soldier. Fast forward to the present, and he stands as the commander-in-chief in an extraordinarily brutal war with TPLF, one that has claimed millions of lives and resulted in a staggering $28 billion in destruction across Tigray and Amhara and Afar. He has also recently initiated another civil war, this time targeting ethnic Amharas. There are growing concerns about the possibility of future conflicts involving Horn of African nations, with Eritrea being a particular focal point. One might assume that someone who has witnessed the horrors of war would strive for peace. However, Abi's actions tell a different story. 20 years ago, I was a radio operator attached to an Ethiopian army unit in the border town of Badum. The town was the flashpoint of the war between the two countries. I briefly left the Fox Wall in the hopes of getting a good antenna reception. It took only but a few minutes, yet 
Upon my return, I was horrified to discover that my entire unit had been wiped out in an artillery attack. I still remember my young comrade in arms who died on that ill-fated day. I think of their families too. During the war between Ethiopia and Eritrea, estimated 100,000 soldiers and civilians lost their lives. The aftermath of the war also left untold numbers of families broken. It also permanently shattered communities on both sides. Massive destruction of infrastructure further amplified the post-war economic burden. Socially, the war resulted in mass displacements, loss of livelihoods. Abiy's rhetoric, given his personal experience with the horrors of war in his youth, sharply contradicts his conduct and proclamations as commander-in-chief. His leadership has seen the nation endure the worst years of violence in Ethiopian history, marked by atrocities and ethnic cleansing on an appalling scale. He has a disturbing penchant for violence, an addiction he cannot seem to break free from, consistently sowing chaos and discord. The pressing question that remains is whether Abi will ever refrain from fueling communal violence and conflict. Numerous nations have grappled with their inability to effectively manage diverse communities, especially in relation to ethnic and religious differences. Rather than preserving delicate balances and fostering communal harmony, Abi consistently appears to escalate tensions while positioning himself as a savior. Abi has been exhibiting a shocking indifference to the continuous bloodshed, brutality, massacres, and ethnic cleansing taking place. His public responses reveal a troubling absence of empathy and emotional detachment. His actions have frequently embodied vindictiveness. Furthermore, considering the ongoing challenges Ethiopia faces and the inability to endure continuous cycles of violence, it may be in the best interest of the country for Abi to seriously contemplate stepping down from his role as Prime Minister. Ethiopia cannot afford to be caught in a perpetual cycle of bloodshed, and a change in leadership might provide an opportunity for healing, reconciliation, and stability in the nation. <laughs>